Always look for food with a board B quality mark, so you can relax and enjoy it more. Toonsbridge Dairy near McCroom in County Cork is one of Ireland's impressive artisan dairies, which transform milk into cheese and butter. Toonsbridge is known especially for its mozzarella cheese, which you can taste on the pizzas served in the restaurant beside the dairy. It's owned by Toby Simmons and Jenny Rose Clark. It's amazing to see such a thriving business in the middle of the countryside. This place has absolutely surprised us. We thought when we opened it, it would be quiet and we just need a couple of staff. And we have eight people working in the cafe over the three days of the weekend. This is only a bit of our business. We do market stalls in Galway and we did them in Dublin. That business is the real olive company. Then in 2011, we started another business, which was our cheese business. We have a little shop as well. and We sell all of our products that we sell on the markets and probably a lot more of our dairy products here as well. But the cheese is the big part now, tell me about that. We started making cheese in 2011, but we've diversified. We're now working with sheep's milk as well as cow's milk. We actually have sheep on our farm. We have a fantastic um, Italian working with us who's milking sheep and making cheese himself and selling milk to us. And do you specialise in any particular cheese? Uh, yes, the, the cheese we've really taken to heart here is pasta filata cheese, which is a family that includes mozzarella, scamorza, cacio cavallo, provolone, burrata and stracciatella. In front of us here we have two pizzas and we also have smoked scamorza in it that we've melted. On this pizza here we have not only fior di latte mozzarella, we also have um, ricotta and this lovely cheese here is scamorza again. And here yeah. we have... Oh my god, that's the stringy. And okay, I'll give you a clean fork then. Baked in a dish in the wood-fired up pizza oven, this cheese melts incredibly well on bread, on top of all kinds of cooking. And you can even just put it into the pan and fry it like you would halloumi. It's delicious. Oh, it's Absolutely <laughs> gorgeous. Now, I've been to Italy and I've seen the whole process of Parmesan, but I've never seen mozzarella being made. Tell me about that. All of the pasta filata cheeses, and mozzarella being the most famous, is a, is a process of simply nobbling the milk protein to make it go stringy, but there's more to it than that. We use raw milk and mm -hmm. we use the whey starter. The whey starter, we're the only people in the country doing it, but Parmesan would use it and all Italian, a lot of Italian cheese making techniques would do it. Whey starters, this bath of the bacteria you take away from the curd and you incubate it and you, you develop it like a sourdough bread and that gives amazing flavours. So you've got this huge range of Bacteria is giving little nuances in the cheese. Then we cut out chunks of this curd and pull them out of the whey and put them onto the table. And we start slicing the curd to open it up for the whey to pour down. And then you get the curd to a place where it's, it's stringy enough. You could use pH meters, but they'll never really tell you what's going on. The traditional way is the best way. It's called the stretch test. And we take a little sample and we just look at it. And we can see and we can feel how near to the perfect stretch it is. Then we can put it into the shredder, and when it goes into the shredder, it's in small enough pieces to go into the mastello, which is the mixing bowl. We also still have to unravel it again, because it's trying to glue itself back together, because it just wants to be fused, and we have to keep on sort of crunching it up and making sure those pieces are the right size. And then we spray it with boiling water, and we're trying to break it up even with the boiling water and then we go in with the stick. We're looking to sort of mix a little bit of water in to get the lovely kind of consistency of bite and softness and wetness. So when you're mixing it, you're taking out water. And if you look at this water, it's full of cream. Mozzarella is quite weird. You, you, you don't skim the milk that makes the curd, but the boiling water spinning process actually sort of makes it almost a half-fat cheese. That water full of the fat it goes through the sieve, you thing, and you put the solids, throw them back in, and you're collecting the spinning water. And the spinning water is a useful thing for later down the line. We can collect that beautiful flavoured cream and use it for a few other things, like butter. And we also put some of the cream back into the ricotta to make it much more flavoursome and much more creamy. So when we've got the curd right, you can feel it and you can see the shine. Once you've really got it to the right place, then it's ready to, to transfer over to, we use the moulding machine. Traditionally in Italy, they would have done by hand. And this machine, we can choose, we have several moulds. We can make very small, like, bocconcinis, or we can make a, a number of sort of other sizes, including we have a log when we make a pizza cheese that we find pizza restaurants like. Our cheesemaker had a fantastic um, expression. He said, it's only mozzarella for four days. 
and then it becomes cheese. So it has to be eaten fresh, it's best. Absolutely best. It, it, people say it to a lot, on the markets a lot to us, when should I eat this? And you say it's like bread. You know, like if you bought bread today, it's going to be better today. We've had a few Italians work with us and they're really impressed with the milk here. We use raw milk. It's really important that you've got good quality milk for mozzarella. Mozzarella almost is a celebration of milk. Well, Toby, it's a great success, and all I can say is congratulate you and the team. And I'm looking forward to enjoying these pizzas before they go cold. Lovely, and tuck in. There are so many wonderful and interesting things happening in the dairy industry in Ireland. For example, innovative farmers such as Maeve and Cork, then worldwide known brands such as Kerrygold, and then we have our small artists and producers such as Toomsbridge Dairy that are based in McCroom. And the recipe I'm going to show you, I'm using their mozzarella. This is it here, and it's made with Irish cow's milk. It's a fritters, which we're going to crumb and give lovely flavour into the crumbs. But first of all, I want to show you a lovely sauce. So, roasting tomatoes, roasting peppers gives great flavour. So what I've done with these lovely little cherry tomatoes, cut them in half, drizzle them with a little bit of oil, salt and pepper. And you roast them in an oven about 150 and they will take approximately about 40 minutes. So this is the base for the sauce. You just cut your tomatoes, keep the little seeds and these are the plum cherry tomatoes. And then we're going to put in some wonderful roast garlic. This is it here. Some people don't like garlic but when you roast it like this it sweetens up. So you keep the skin on, you roast it and this will take about an hour in a good hot oven. Take the top off, wrap it in tin foil and then you literally place it on the tray with the fresh pepper into the oven a little bit of oil over the pepper and then when you roast the red pepper like this it sweetens it and the flavour just changes so much. So the first thing we'll do is we'll get our garlic out and what you usually do is try and squeeze this out. It's soft, it's mushy. This garlic here will keep for three to four days in your fridge and it's as easy as that. Just use a small spoon and you can scrape out as much. And then our peppers. Peel this here. So when it comes out of the oven, a good tip for you is to put it in a bowl, cover it with cling film, and then what happens is the steam that's created in the bowl will just help remove the skin. It's as easy as that. So just simply remove as many of the seeds as possible and then put that into your jug. Basil tomatoes, they all go really well in the sauce. So just simply fresh basil leaves into the bowl. So half a lemon, squeeze that in there. Extra virgin olive oil. And then we're going to put in also a splash of balsamic vinegar. So this will give a lovely tartness. You have the sweetness of the tomatoes, the basil and the red pepper and the garlic. Salt and pepper. And then we blitz this. Just hand blend it. Throw it into your food processor, whatever you have at home. I'm going to blend this for a minute or two. So just push it right down to the bottom. So start off slowly or else it can go everywhere. That looks lovely. I want to show you the consistency of this. So I want to serve it cold because the mozzarella fritters are going to be hot and this is going to be nice and uh, cold. So it's going to be nice and refreshing. Going to work really well with the creaminess of the mozzarella. Using the Nutribullet, we're going to make a very quick rocket pesto. It's the most economical salad to grow because it grows and grows and grows. It's peppery. Traditionally, when you make a pesto, it's made with basil. So what I love to put in when I'm making any kind of pesto is toasted nuts. I'm using some pine nuts. So how you toast nuts is on a dry pan. Don't add any oil. It releases their natural oils and it gives great flavour. So make sure you toast whatever nuts. Some parmesan cheese. Just grate it in here. Some oil and salt and pepper and that's it. So there's no garlic in this, but you can put garlic, of course, in and we're using the extra virgin olive oil, or you could use an Irish rapeseed oil. Black pepper, and then a little bit of salt. So the Nutribullet is great because it's great for making smoothies and different things like that. There's a little blade, that's it there, and you just simply screw it. Again, you can do this in the food processor. You don't have to have a hand blender or your little mixer like this. You give it a little shake, and then just put the lid on, and I'm gonna let this blitz for a minute. Now, how easy is that? And look at this. You have great colour. Tiny little bit of texture, but you have that lovely pepperness. That will keep happily in your fridge for up to two weeks. Once you cover it with another little bit of oil, airtight container, in a Kindler jar, whatever you have. Now, next, our mozzarella. Made with Irish cow's milk. And we're going to do fritters. Cut into quarters. And then we're going to flour egg and breadcrumb them. And into the breadcrumbs, 
I've just made a little bit of kind of flavor, shall we say, a little bit of lemon zest and also a little bit of parsley. So let's just put them into the flour first. So this is going to help the egg stick. So I have one egg, a little bit of milk just here. So flour first of all, and then into the egg. So when you're doing this, it's really important to keep one hand dry, one hand wet. So one hand is gonna go in to the egg mixture. So this is just egg and milk. And then the other hand into your breadcrumbs. So the breadcrumbs have lovely herbs, a little bit of parsley, and also some lemon zest. Completely cover it. And these are just some plain white breadcrumbs. So that's our mozzarella fritters. The easiest way to cook this is deep frying them. You can bake these off in the oven, but it's definitely quicker. You're gonna get a more even color. So pop them in. So when you're deep frying anything, kitchen paper. Just use a slotted spoon. They look gorgeous. And you'll see a tiny little bit of the cheese might just begin to seep out. So you want this kind of like a spongy effect, if you can see that. They're soft in the center. The breadcrumbs are golden brown and they're crispy. And we're ready to serve up. The first thing I'm gonna do is just put our sauce. The roasted pepper, roasted garlic, the lovely tomatoes. Spoon this and it's cold. Just with the pesto, we have a spoon in it. We just drizzle this around. So look at those beautiful, vibrant colors. Now your little fritters, so they are fragile. I'll just break one open and I'll just show it to you. They're just soft and they're hot. And just, we're gonna arrange three of them. And then the final presentation is just some rocket and then some basil. Just over the top, just be very rustic. Don't hide the cheese, a few little basil leaves. There we go, how good does that look? That is absolutely great sense of textures with the creaminess of the mozzarella, smokiness of the roast garlic and tomato sauce with red peppers, and our beautiful wild rocket pesto. Always look for food with a board B quality mark, so you can relax and enjoy it more. 